The solution to this problem is perhaps uh, to remember what that other eternal optimist, the Lord Buddha, always taught that without our, that with our thoughts we make the world. How we see the world dictates how we behave towards towards it. So perhaps one good start would be to widen our perception a little to see how we really fit into nature's extraordinarily waste-free, energy-efficient system, so that we realize we are as much part of nature's processes as everything else. If we do this, if we see that we are also nature, then we really begin to feel the impact of what we do in a more profound way. That what we do to nature, we do to ourselves. If we limit her capacity to sustain herself, we also limit our capacity to sustain ourselves as well. So, Liz, what has all this got to do with you? Well, let's start with the fact that you are all leaders in your communities. Nice though it is to see you all, that is the reason why you were invited to be here tonight. You are all leaders in the Northwest. Between you, you have the capacity to make your region a leader in starting to do things differently, to provide a beacon of hope both locally and nationally. So I can only encourage you to seek out and nurture your community entrepreneurs, some of whom I know are here tonight and who, whom I've already met and whom I admire enormously to help them to construct and communicate compelling stories about what they're doing and to harness their ambition, not just to get started, but to grow and keep growing. I would also, if I may, encourage you to take a few risks. I do understand how difficult that is, especially when public money is involved. As I say, we can't go on doing the same things and expect to get different results. We need a step change in sustainability, and that is surely going to require us to embrace things that are currently regarded as a best alternative. I, I well remember, and this is a true story, that the Manchester Guardian once wrote in a way that implied my eccentricity had finally gone from one stage, had gone one stage too far, that I had installed a strange engine, so described it, at Kensington Palace. It was in fact a prototype recycling bin for glass bottles. Now that was a good many years ago, but I, need I say more? I could actually say the same about the reaction to my reed bed sewage treatment system at Highgrove nearly 20 years ago, uh, but I won't. Ladies and gentlemen, if we turn to the bigger picture for a moment, I know that for many of you, economic challenges will be uppermost in your thoughts. You might well think that um, the challenge of achieving sustainability can be put off for a while. But ultimately, the state of the world's economies, and this is, I think, of huge importance, depends on the health of the global environment, and not, not the other way around. Fixing broken economies is certainly going to be difficult enough, but starting to come up with a sustainable, with, with a sustainable solutions that will stand the test of time is equally, or is arguably, even more important. It is also unequivocally, unequivocally urgent. Now, I do want to keep tonight's focus on the positive and on starting to do things differently at the local level. But just bear with me for a moment while I quote a short piece from something called the Millennium Ecosystem Assessment, which is one of the largest scientific reviews ever undertaken 
of the state of our planet. The authors said, if natural systems are well understood and behave in a predictable way, it might be possible to calculate what would be a safe amount of pressure to inflict on them without endangering the basic services they provide to humankind. Unfortunately, the living machinery of Earth has a tendency to move from gradual to catastrophic change with little warning. Such is the complexity of the relationships between plants, animals, and microorganisms that these tipping points cannot be forecast by existing science. No rhetoric there, just a calm and sober warning of the real dangers we face. And have we not just seen this in action in Pakistan, and Indonesia, and China, and Russia? Driest early part of the year ever recorded, as Philip Green just mentioned. Nevertheless, and with those words ringing in our ears, I do believe there are grounds for optimism. History shows us that human ingenuity is boundless, and if directed at finding the right kinds of solutions to the correct challenges, I have no doubt that we can meet what are sometimes regarded as seemingly impossible goals. Saving the rainforests, curbing greenhouse gas emissions to sustainable levels, restoring fisheries, now under huge threat all around the world, tackling poverty, establishing more sustainable urban communities, and building 21st century industries using new technologies many mimicking nature's incredible wasteful ingenuity, called biomimicry, can all be achieved if fundamentally we recognize that we have a much deeper relationship with nature's processes and patterns than we have been led to believe, that her cycles and her limits are part of us. Then not only can we decide to do something positive, we will also have a more comprehensive and deeply anchored outlook for the job in hand, to build a common purpose in our schools, businesses, and at home that is necessary for us to succeed. We really do not need, as is sometimes suggested, to choose between, on the one hand, protecting our planet's life support systems, and on the other, creating jobs and building a stronger society. We can be really revolutionary and really positive and combine the two by building, the, building new models of economic development that reflect the urgent need to live off our planet's income rather than digging into nature's rapidly depleting capital. And that, ladies and gentlemen, is where start comes in. Because doing things differently is going to require a mass effort involving the whole of humanity. It has certainly never been done before, but then we have never before faced such a challenge. And nor have we had such tools at our disposal to communicate the many things we can all do to address it. I said at the beginning of this talk that START is a hugely ambitious project. I hope, there's a, well, I, I, I have convinced you, that it is also immensely worthwhile. There is a daunting amount to do if it is to succeed, but the monks who drew up the plans for this monastery no doubt thought the same, as I'm sure did the group who set out to restore it to this glorious state. They both succeeded, and with your help, Start will too. Thank you.